Hey everyone, Jason and Katie here, the lead pastors at Revive in Sydney. I'm uh, so excited that you're tuning in to some really big and important information about who we are as a church. Yes, come with us as we explore our identity as a church. We're going to look at our mission, yep. our foundation, our vision and our cultures as a church. And so look, we're just so excited about sharing our heart with you. We've been penning this for a long, long time. And so join us as we unpack this over our vision series. So the first thing that we need to understand, we've got to understand why. So before we kind of talk about what we do and where we're going and what the future is going to be, we, we want to identify why do we even exist as a church? Because once you can work out the why, then the what will happen. The what will come, the plan will come, the strategy will come, but you need to clarify why? Why are we here? Why does the church exist? Why do you guys rock up to church on a Sunday? You don't just come to church on a Sunday so you can miss having a big breakfast on a Sunday morning, right? You come here for a deeper purpose, a deeper reason. There is a why. And so we're going to unpack that why. Moving out to the next part, if we can put that up on the screen, it's now what? What do we believe? Right? What, are, what are some of the foundations? And so we're going to come up with some, pil- uh, some foundations or pillars, if you want to call it that. What are the foundations of our church? What are the non-negotiables? And so we're going to unpack that. And then moving outside of that, uh, we're going to then talk about where are we going? What's the vision? W- what's the heart? Where are we heading? What's this going to look like? And then finally, we're going to then talk about who we are. So our culture statements and, and the culture that we want to see in this house, it's going to come from a place of knowing why we actually exist. Are you with me? So we're just going to go on that journey. We're going to unpack that and moving from the center, moving out. Are you with me? So the mission is everything. And it's so important to us as a church that we have a mission as to why we're here. And we go straight from the Bible. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19.10, seek and save the lost. Let's go to the next verse. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And sure, I am with you always to the very end of age. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. So our mission, our purpose is to seek and save the lost and to rise up disciples. How exciting is that? For everyone to know Jesus and find purpose. How much purpose does this society need and identity and and who they are and what they live for? We believe that the Bible already thousands of years ago has made that clear and it is still relevant to this day, that we are on a mission for everyone to know Jesus and to find purpose. That's awesome. And so as you can see, that's a sentence that encapsulates those two parts. We want to make sure that as a church, and again, we want people to start to understand this language, you're going to start to see the words for everyone around the place. You're going to hear us talking about to know Jesus. So know Jesus, that's one part. Finding purpose, that's the other part. So people knowing Jesus, that's evangelism. That's going after people who don't know who Jesus is. And then finding purpose, that speaks of discipleship. And so obviously connect groups is something that we do. And so connect groups is the system in how we help people find purpose. Are you with me? So for everyone to know Jesus and find purpose, we break this down into two parts. The knowing Jesus part, that's why we do services. So why we gather, why we do Sunday AMs and PMs, why the youth ministry gather, why young adults gather, why people gather, it's so that people would know Jesus. Number one, that people who don't know Jesus would find Jesus, but then you and I who might know Jesus can know Jesus a little bit better, right? That's why we do services. Then the other part is tracks. Now tracks, I'm not going to be able to unpack it all that's, here there's today. a lot of info coming out about that next week. We're That's right. Very excited to tell yeah, you more so, about that. Yeah. So next week, myself, uh, Katie, and Steph, we're going to sit down and unpack uh, tracks. And essentially, tracks is a discipleship pathway. It's a discipleship journey of people coming to our church. So how do we get someone from a visitor 
to the place where they're actually leading people. Now, as you saw in Matthew 28, our mandate, now hear me out, this is not a go at anybody, but our mandate as a church is not to get people to a place where they're serving on a team. No, the Bible says, and what Jesus said was to go and make disciples. That's right. So our mandate is not to put someone on a team. Our mandate is to get someone leading someone who's leading someone else who's yeah. leading someone else. Yeah. So our mandate is discipleship. And so tracks is going to be the mechanism that we've come up with. We've spent years um, rewriting courses, obviously things like uh, water baptism, things like living free, which we're now going to be calling the freedom course. There's a whole bunch of things that we've been looking at. And so we've created a pathway yeah. to get someone in from a visitor to the point that they're leading um, someone else or discipling someone else, right? And so that's what tracks is. And so we're going to take a deep dive into that next week. But those are our two mechanisms to achieve the mission that God's called us to. So can everyone say that with me for everyone to know Jesus and find purpose? Are you ready? One, two, three. For everyone to know Jesus and find purpose. I want that to get into your heart. I want it to get into your spirit. Let that be the reason because anything that we do in church has to be run through that filter. So we're not just going to start a ministry if it doesn't achieve that purpose. We're not just going to go do a, run a course that doesn't achieve those things. In fact, the mission partners that we want to partner with, we want to make sure that we're partnering pe- with people that are wanting to achieve that same thing. So everything that we're doing, we're trying to filter through a clear and yeah. clarified mission statement. Like lenses, hey. It's like, like lenses, yeah. We need yeah. both lenses to be able to see clearly. And those are the lenses that we will look at, how we operate as a church, what, what things we run as a church. Those two need to go together. Correct. You good? So one more time, let's read it together. Ready? One, two, three. For everyone to know Jesus and find purpose. Simple, right? Simple? You feel all right? Great. So I'm going to talk about our foundations, right? Our foundations. What do we believe? What are the kind of pillars You know, to build a house, you need to lay down foundations before you build anything, right? Some of the biggest skyscrapers, I don't know if you've seen it, if you walk through the city, you can kind of see some development. You kind of walk in, and as you're walking down, if if you've ever looked through some of the the fencing that they have there, have you ever looked down and seen how deep some of these holes are? Huge, ridiculous. Why? Because the deeper the foundation is, the higher the building can go. So what God wants to do in our life really comes down to deep foundations, The deeper we go, the bigger that God can build, right? And so we want to make sure that the foundations that we're building this house on are very important. They're very critical. And these are the essentially the non-negotiables. What do we believe? These are the things that we are not kind of shaking. These are the things that are the, yeah, it's this, it's full stop. This is important, right? So our foundations, what do we believe? So we're going to go to Ephesians 4, right? And, And something that was really important to Katie and, my, uh, and I, and also even Pastor Barry and Tracy, as we were talking about the future of this church, um, was this idea of the fivefold ministry. Okay, for some of you who don't know who that is, you find that in Ephesians four. Um, uh, some of us who've been around in church world for a long time or read read the Bible for a long time, you'd be aware of it. Um, Ephesians four, the Bible says this: So Christ gave, so Christ Himself, sorry, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Right? So this, we're talking about leadership. So God actually positions these five different types of leaders. Why? To equip His people for works of service. So, so often we can think that the, the people who need to reach people are just the pastors. And so it's like, hey, you know, I need prayer. I need to see, like, and, and I need my pastor to see you. Oh, you, you, need, you need help right now? My pastor needs to see you. Oh, you, you need prayer for something? My pastor needs to see you. Oh, you, you're, you're not doing well? My pastor needs to see you. But here's the thing. The, the Bible says in, in 1 Peter 2, 9, it says, you are a royal priesthood. You're a holy people. You're a, you're a chosen nation, a special, God's special possession. And so God has called each of us to lead. God has called each of us to pray. He's called all of us. The moment you become a believer, the moment you say yes to God, God's by His, by His Spirit, He's empowered each of you to pray for sick people. He's empowered you to preach the gospel. He's empowered you to reach your community and reach your family. And so the equipping of the saints, the equipping of the people, that's talking about you and I. And so all of us together, we gather together. And as we gather together, that's actually what makes the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ right? Because I can't fulfill the bride by myself. 
I'm not all of those five things. In fact, Jesus is the only one who's all, all five of those things. He was the greatest apostle. He's the high prophet. He obviously is the evangelist. He's the greatest pastor and shepherd. And he was the great, greatest teacher of all time. So none of us in ourselves can achieve this. But together, as we bring our gifts to the house, as we bring our gifts to this, to revive church. Hello, that sounds good. Um, as we bring it to this place, we then actually satisfy what Ephesians 4 is actually talking about. So it's to equip his people for works of service. And here's the point. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure. Everyone say whole measure. Okay, so we've got these five areas. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So what we've done is Looking at the foundations, we've gone, we want to have a church that is equipped, that's equipping the, ch- the church, equipping the saints, equipping the people. And so that comes back down to this concept of fivefold ministry. And so let's look at our five foundations. Are you with me? Yeah. Fantastic. The first one, we are a leader raising church. We raise leaders who raise other leaders. And essentially, that's discipleship. If you're effectively discipling someone, you're discipling someone that is going to eventually disciple someone else. The, the way you know someone's effectively discipling someone is if there's fruit. And the fruit is the people that they disciple are discipling other people. That's why what Jesus started over 2,000 years ago is the fastest growing and largest movement in the history of mankind. And so we are a leader-raising church. It's non-negotiable. We will, we will have discipleship as a foundation of our church. You with me? I hope that's a church that you want to be a part of. The second foundation is that we are a spirit-led church. We pray and move in the power of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? We pray and move in the power of the Holy Spirit. I love what um, Pastor Candy did this, this evening. I'm just going to say this. And I'm, I'm telling you, we're just unapologetic about it. We are a spirit-led church. We are a tongue-speaking, Holy Spirit-filled, on fire for the things of God. We pray, believing that God can heal today. He healed yesterday. He heals today. He's going to heal tomorrow. We believe in the power and the presence and the work of Jesus Christ. And so we believe the Holy Spirit, He's filled us. And so by His power, we can step into things that we never thought possible. And so we are a Spirit-led church. Number three, so that speaks of the prophetic, right? So I'm trying to give you all the angles, right? Number three, we're an evangelistic church. So what does that mean? We are a Jesus-centered church. We win souls no matter what the cost. Yep. So let me say that. Now, let me explain it like this. Uh, you might hear us put out an altar call uh, every, every service saying, if there's anyone in here that wants to give their life to Jesus, and we, we put that opportunity about, uh, out, out there for that. Uh, I'm just going to say it like this. I'm totally unapologetic about that. Because I think if we can give people an opportunity to find Jesus, we are a Jesus-centered church. It's not actually about just coming in and having an experience. It's actually about going, how can we point people to Jesus? How can we get them to meet Jesus? And so we will always unapologetically give people an opportunity to meet Jesus. We will always preach Jesus. That is who we're about. That's who the focus is. And so because it's part of our mission, it's part of our foundation, we will preach Jesus. We will teach Jesus. We will love Jesus. We will follow Jesus. We are a Jesus-centered church. Whatever the cost, whatever the cost, we will do whatever it takes to reach people with the message of Jesus. Number four, our fourth foundation is this, is that we're a people-focused church. We include everyone and we love each other. It's kind of like a Barney moment, right? I love you, you. Okay, it's cute, but let's go deeper, right? This is actually what Jesus calls us to do, calls us to love one another. And so we want to make sure that as a church, we are people-focused. As soon as someone walks into this house, people focused. How can we love this person? How can we care for this person? I I love it. The gospel is come as you are. Now, it doesn't stop there. It's come as you are. Don't stay as you are. So Jesus does something in our life and transforms us. But we also need to understand that whoever walks through this door is welcome in this house. Whoever walks through this door is going to be loved and is going to be included. And so we need to have that mentality where we are people focused. We love people. And that then speaks to that pastoral part. And then the the last part is this, is that we are a Bible-based church. We preach the power and the truth of the word. Now, for people who might have said, oh, we don't do Bible here. Okay. Um, 
we, we so believe in the power of the Bible. Every time, we, the first thing that even came out of our mouths when it comes to the mission of this house is Scripture. When Pastor Barry preaches, 40,000 verses for one point, okay? <laughs> we have been preaching the Bible for decades. We will continue to preach the Bible for as long as we're around. I preach the Bible every time. If, if you don't believe me, come and see my preaching notes. I'll show you. The first thing at the top of my, my, all of my notes is a Bible verse. We love the Word of God. There's power in the Word of God. It's the Word of God that changes lives, so why would we not preach it? So we're going to keep preaching that. So these are our foundations. We are a leader-raising church. We're a spirit-led church. We're a Jesus-centered church. We're a people-focused church, and we're a Bible-based church. Those are the foundations, the non-negotiables of who we are. Ah. So we've got five things that are important uh, for what the vision is of this church. So we are multi-generational. I love that about our church, and that's what I remember growing up from our church, you know, um, getting the, the old ladies, you know, pinching on the ear, giving you lollies, and, you know, uh, Werther's Originals was a big thing when I was a kid. I'm still <laughs> down with like Werther's Original, man. That, them, what is yeah. it about it? It's still so oh, good. Oh, it was horrible, but I, I remember like getting it. given them a lot as a kid like and it. thinking, oh, okay, because you're watching me unwrap it. I'll <laughs> put it in my mouth. <laughs> Does anyone remember that? The Werthers? Yeah. So, but we love being a multi generational church. We have literally, uh, um, from babies to 100, we value um, every age. And even scripturally, the Bible talks about how every age is so important. The young men will dream dreams and the old men will prophesy. And we believe um, that also there is wisdom that can come from the older generation. Um, there is life that comes from the younger generation. There is a sweet spirit that can go across all generations. Um, and we believe that they are all so important to this house. And, and, and just on that, you and I are so committed to multi-generational that even my hair is multi-generational <laughs> right now. Like, have you seen my greys? Like, I am rocking it. We're actually it. both going a bit grey. I got some salt and honest, pepper. To be honest, we turned 30 yeah. and I was like, what happened? Serious, <laughs> like, serious salt happening. and pepper. But yes, yeah. we love the generations. We do. Um, okay, by the way, I did cut his hair this morning. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? I've just been sitting here admiring the fade. Fresh fade? Might need to fit, no. fix it at the back. I this side of the room does not approve. <laughs> I don't, I'm not feeling it much love. I can feel the... They're like, really? You did it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think they Thanks, can tell guys. I did Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, so the next one. We are multi-race. We are... Me and Jace, we're doing our part. Okay? <laughs> For this church. <laughs> now... Not only that, our children are three different colours. Like, seriously, we are making sure this church is a multi-race church. So pick it up, everyone. No, no. We have a multi-race church. I love it. I love that when we look out, we just see every continent represented here. We want more, though. We want more. I've got um, especially cuisines of different countries that I'm not seeing enough of here that I'd really like <laughs> to have. Um, but, uh, yeah, we value... I think, when we think of multi, um, multi-race, I think of heaven. Yeah. You know, in heaven, can you imagine all the nations, yeah, every, tribe, every, every tribe, tribe, every tongue, worshipping our God, and we believe that is what the church needs to look like. We need to represent um, that as well. So that's really important to us. Yeah. Okay, the next one is multiplying. We spoke about that already, discipleship. We believe in discipleship. That's an important vision for us. The next one is multi-purpose. Um, okay, I'm going to touch on this a little bit and I'll get you to expand on that. It's more than just what we do on the Sunday. So, Jess, could you tell us a little bit more about the ideas? Yeah, so, so this concept of multi-purpose is, obviously, we're, we're following this multi-theme, right? Multi-gen, multi-race, multiplying, multi-purpose. And so, um, the, the heart of being a multi-purpose church is so, some, sometimes and so often, we can think that church is just about a Sunday gathering, mm. yet being the church... It is so important to who we are, right? Where the, the church, and Pastor Barry would share on this so much, is that the church is not a building. This, it's a great building, and we love it, and we're grateful for it, but that's, this is not the church. This is the church. Yeah. We are the church. And so we've got to remember that church is not just a gathering on Sunday. We need to think about how is the church impacting the world outside of Sunday, 
And so we're looking at how we can actually impact different spheres. We're looking at how can we impact the business world? How can we impact the, the world of arts? How can we impact the sport world? And we've had different conversations recently um, of what's going on in our church and how we can actually get our church's presence into our local community, uh, into local business. Like, what can we do to have a presence where we are impacting the world, not just here on a Sunday, but actually Monday through to Saturday, actually impacting people's lives and changing them for the kingdom of God. And so that's what we mean by multipurpose, not just this one thing, yeah. but let's, let's diversify. Let's yeah. really impact the world the way God has called us to. That's good. That's good. And our last one is multi-site. Why? Why not just stay here? Because the Bible says reach all people. So if there's p- people somewhere, we need to reach them. And we are very open to where God, um, God is leading us as a church and very prayerfully considering what's next in terms of uh, multi-site. Where is God taking revive? Yeah. What cities does God want to revive? Yeah. What countries does God want to revive? Because we believe if there are people there, they need to be reached. And, and can I just add to that? Part of what we love about the name is that the name is not just a word. It's actually a declaration over the city that we're in. Yeah, so revive Sydney. That's, that, that's saying, God, would you revive this city yeah. and revive, insert whatever destination, wherever God leads us. And so what, what we love about that is that there's more to the name than just an icon or more than, uh, more than it is. It's just more than a word. There's something powerful that we're declaring yeah. over wherever we go. And I will say this as well. Um, we, we don't have like a plan right now of where we're going to go and what we're going to do. Uh, the way... W- Katie and I will will function this and the way we'll lead it is a big thing is prayer, okay? Mm. We're not going to rush this. We're not going to go to this city and go to that city. A lot of how this happens is organic. It's got to be the right people. It's got to be the right timing. We've got to have the right resource. And so we're not rushing any of this. We're praying. We're seeking God. And when it's the right time, when the right people come along and when God gives us the green light, then then we go. But we're just giving you the heads up as a church where we believe this is going is multi-site. So if something happens... Don't freak out and go, oh my gosh, you never told me. No, no, we told you. We just want you to prepare yourself. Buckle up for the journey because God's got great plans for this church. He's got great plans for this house. He's got great plans for the earth. And so this is what we believe and foresee it to be. Yep, amen. So now we move out, okay? So we've gone, why do we exist? Our mission. We've gone, what do we believe? Our foundations. We've also then talked about where are we going? Our vision, okay? Now I know we're just spinning a lot of info at you. Are you taking it all in? Okay. So now finally we're going to talk about our culture. Who are we? What kind of church do we want to have? So first up, the first thing, passion. And so these are going to be culture statements. You're going to hear culture sentences. You can go ahead and write these down. Um, or you can take photos. Some people are taking photos. That's cool. But passion. We are a passionate church that is expressive in our worship and hungry for his presence. Yeah. Actually, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to get us to read it together. Okay, so passion. Are you ready? One, two, three. We, we are a passionate church that is expressive in our worship and hungry for his presence. You know, uh, we, we had someone come and speak at our church, a guy named Pastor Louis Antonio. Now, Pastor Louis, his background was wild. Like, he, he was telling us he used to read the Bible while he was on drugs. Like, there was just some crazy stuff that was going on in his world. That's part, part of his testimony. And I remember, never forget, he came in and he was sharing his testimony, sharing his story about how God kind of impacted his life. And what happened was he actually walked into this room, right, into this house many, many years ago. And as he walked in, he opened his eyes and just saw people in the room lifting their hands and worshipping. And as he saw that, he said, something's missing from my life. I need what they have. Yeah. And it was because of people's passion that actually turned his heart and went, what, what am I filling my life with? Today, he's the senior pastor of a church. He's leading people. Their church is healthy and God's doing great things in them. But I, I say all of that to say how important passion is. This house will be a passionate house. When we worship, we lift our hands and we worship. Why? Because God didn't just die on the cross for us in his heart. No, he died on the cross for us with his life. He gave up himself. In fact, the Bible, everywhere in the Bible, when it refers to worship, there is not one part of the Bible that talks about worship as I worship in my heart. If you translate every word for worship and praise in the Bible in its original context, right? Every word 
is responsive or correlated to a physical action. Mm. It's bowing down. It's lying prostrate. Tough word to get. Prostrate. It's prostrate. (laughs) It's it's a word you don't want to stuff up, right? You lying prostrate on the ground before God, right? There's even a word. One of the words for worship is to spin violently. Spinning violently. Can you imagine a church of violent spinners? It's crazy. But I'm just saying worship, it's got to be a passionate thing. Psalms 84, it says, my heart and my flesh cry out for God. And so we are a passionate church that's expressive in our worship and hungry for His presence. Next one, unity. This is another value. It's important to us. We are a united church. Can you read it with me? Ready? One, two, three. We are a united church that is diverse in people but single in vision. I love that. Multi-generational, multi-racial, every color, every creed, every tribe, every tongue, but moving in one direction. Shout out to One Direction, right? The band. uh, (laughs) Can't remember. Can't even think of a song. But anyway, united, but singular in vision. We are working at this thing together. Whatever you come from, whatever your background is, whether you've been in this church for decades or whether it's your first Sunday here, we are all on the same mission. And the mission is... Let's see if you remember this. For everyone to know Jesus and find purpose. That's the goal. That's the vision. That's what we're moving towards. You with me? Unity. Everyone say unity. Unity. It's important. Every generation, everyone working together. Can we make sure we get that right in this spirit and in our house? The one thing I think that the devil is more scared about than anything. He's not scared of a big church. He's not scared of a loud church. He's not scared of a happy clappy church. He's scared of a united church. Yep. When we're united, man, that does some damage for the kingdom of God. Yep. All right, next one. Generosity. We are, let's, let's read this together. One, two, three. We are a generous church that freely gives with no strings attached. That means that not just in our finance, but with our time. We're generous with our words. We're generous with our encouragement. We are a generous house. We love each other and we give to each other. And we don't just give to each other. We give outside of this. We are a giving church. Can I tell you why? It's because God first gave to us. He is the greatest giver. He, he, I I can't even tell you, the only people that I know who, who, every single time, that we had obviously Pastor Mark and Darlene with us last week, and we had them out, they've given us their time, and we want to give them a gift and bless them for being with us. And so Darlene texts us and goes, hey, what's your address? I said, I'm not telling you my address. And she goes, no, 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 I want to send a gift. I said, you guys being there, that's the gift. And she's impossible to outgive. She will come along, give, and then keep giving. And I'm like, how do we compete? I can't compete, right? And so can you imagine if we had that mentality of like, because we, we obviously cannot outgive God. God has given us so much. God gave his son and Jesus gave his life for us. And so that should spark the generosity that we're called to walk in, okay? The fourth value. I love this one. Everyone say fun. 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 We are a, let's read this together. Ready? We are a fun church that is full of hope and full of life. John 10.10, it says this, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came so that you may have life and life in abundance, life to its fullest. And so that's what I, I love that about Jesus, that Jesus didn't come so that when we walk into church, we're like Eeyore. <laughs> come on, man, fun. It's full of life. He gave his life so that we could have life. So it can be, I'm standing. That means I'm about to preach. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying full of, can we be a house that is full of life? When people walk into this room, it's full of joy that we actually love each other. We love being here and we love Jesus. Yeah. Full of hope and full of life. Next one. Freedom. Freedom. Let's read this together. Ready? We are a free church that believes in transformation and walks in breakthrough. So obviously one of the most powerful things I believe that came out of the last era of our church was our Living Free course. That Living Free course will continue to go ahead. It's such an important part of the future of this church. People living in freedom, walking in freedom. And so what we've done, Pastor Barry and myself and some of the team, we've worked on developing the language and, and worked on shifting some, some of it to in, enhance the course. And I can tell you, it is still powerful. I, I, I believe it's, it's, it's got, I remember when we were the youth pastors, we, we full on made a, made a rule about it. We were like, if anyone joins this team, you have to do living free before you start on this team. It's because people living free, man, 
That is a powerful, powerful thing. So we believe that God transform, transforms people. We believe that God has called us to walk in breakthrough. And so freedom is one of our values. Let's go. Let's keep going to the next one. These cultural values. All right. Serving. All right. Ready? Do you read it with me? Okay. We are a selfless church that will do whatever it takes to reach whoever we can. You walked in today and we have about, how many people serving on team today? About 40, 50? It's about 40 to 50 people that serve every single week for every single service. So when you walk into this place, this just didn't happen. There are people that have laid down their lives and committed time and given energy to being a part of this team to help make sure that when you walk in, God actually speaks to your life and God does something in your world. There are people that have been here since, like, I'm talking about really early in the morning. Really early in the morning. (laughs) And we value that. We value that. We value being selfless people. And so Christ came not to be served, but to serve. I'll preach a sermon on that right now, but I won't. But we are not consumers, we're contributors. We don't just come to church just to take, 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 and get what I can, and I've got to take this, and I've got to take that. Oh, I don't like going to the church because I don't feel fed. Mm. You don't feel fed because you're not eating the daily bread you should be eating every single day of the week. This, this church, our preaching doesn't exist just to feed your life. The Word of God is there, so you can eat it as much as you want. Eat it up, it's delicious right? But let's remember, when we come, when we gather, it's to serve, it's to give, all right? Serving. Next one. Excellence. Read this with me. We are an excellent church that gives God our best in everything that we do. Does God deserve your best? Do we, we should, that means that we should do everything wholehearted, full of faith, and full of passion with everything that we have. Excellence is a key part. Now, that doesn't mean that we demand everything. Hey, do this for me. I'm telling you this. It's my way or the highway. No, that's, that's not what it is. I love how Pastor Barry put it. We have a spirit of excellence with an excellent spirit. Yep. That's, that's the heart. Okay, so yep. Daniel, read, read the book of Daniel. God gave him favor with man, right, and with God because yep. the Bible says because he had a spirit of excellence. Right? right. So excellence is going to be a big part of who we are. And that's why our team, that video that you saw, that was excellent. It was, they, they, they put heart and soul into that. And so our team, I love you guys. You guys are the best. All right. Next one. Honor. Can you read this with me? Ready? We are an honoring church that is loud with our praise and public with our encouragement. We're not loud with our criticism. (laughs) We're not loud with our gossip. We're not loud with our negativity. We are loud with our praise and public with our encouragement. I pray that when people walk into this house, what people hear is not, oh, can you believe what they did? Can you hear what they said? Did you see what Jason's wearing? The orange jacket? Oh my God, sacrilegious. No, no, no. Wind it back. Let's make sure that when people walk into this house, they hear honoring culture. They hear an encouraging culture. They hear a culture where we build each other up and love each other. You you know, the, the Bible even says this. How will they, Jesus said this, how will they know that they are my disciples? How? By the way that they love each other. So let our language speak love of each other. Honor to one another. Next one. Justice. Read this with me. Ready? We are a loving church. Come on, have, have, have a bit of vibrato. Don't be scared. It's okay. Justice. Ready? One, two, three. We are a loving church that speaks for those who can't and stands with those in need. Okay? So uh, next week, you're going to hear about some of our justice projects uh, that we got launching, not just globally, but also locally as well. We want to make sure that we're making a difference in our community too, right? Matthew 25, it talks so much about what you did for the least of these, the poor, the hungry, the thirsty. That's what you actually did to Jesus. And so So justice is a value and a culture of who we are. Next one, vision. Ready? We are a big thinking church that is ground taking and future building. Although we honor the past, we build on the past. We're actually looking ahead. We're looking forward. We're so excited about what God did, but we don't live there because God is doing a new thing. In fact, in Isaiah, it talks about that. Forget the former things. Take note, God is doing a new thing. And so we honor it. Thank you, God, for it. Thank you for 1955 when they purchased this building. Thank you for the leaders and the sacrifice that has come before us. But come on, they paid the price so that we wouldn't be stuck looking back. They paid the price so we would look forward and look ahead and move in the future. Okay, so as a church, we want to take ground and we want to build the future. Amen. Next one. Faith. We are, let's read this together, we are a faith-filled church that can create an atmosphere where anything can happen, right? So when people walk into this place, we believe in the power of God. And so the atmosphere of our church, 
It doesn't just come down, although lighting and sound and production team, all of those things are important. But the atmosphere that changes someone's life, someone's life is an atmosphere of faith. Remember that story where Jesus kicks them all out of the room? There's a dead, dying girl on the floor. Oh, not on the floor, on the bed. And, and Jesus kicks them all out of the room because there's no faith in the room. He kicks them out and he goes, no, 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 out, out, out. And so he prays for them and she comes to life again. Why? Because an atmosphere, atmosphere of faith leads to miracles, leads to God moving and leads to change. And so we are that faith-filled church. We're going to believe that God can do more and greater things. Amen? Amen? Let's go to the next one. Integrity. This is our final cultural value, okay? We are, read this with me, we are an integrous church that is open with our lives and honest with our actions. You know, Pastor Barry exampled that so well in his time, in his leadership. And obviously part of this team, that's a big part of what we want to do. What we say on the platform is who we are. How we talk up here is how we talk in our homes. It's how we treat our wives and how we, can, I, can we go a bit deeper? If we lead here, right, we don't live this double life. If we say we follow Jesus, we follow Jesus in our life and in our private life. We're not around the back going, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to get on the drugs, I'm going to get on the, I'm going to go sleep with that person. And say, no, no, no. If we say we follow Jesus, we're all in. Integrity. What we say and how we live aligns. You like that action? Da, da, da. Integrity. Everyone say integrity. Fantastic. So those are the 12 cultural values of this house. How do you feel? Is that a church that you can be a part of? I hope so. I hope it stirs you and it excites you. Just a couple things about what we're rolling out. Uh, New projects that we're rolling out. We're going to be talking about tracks. If we can just move through through these really quickly. So tracks. All right. Next week, week we're going to be unpacking that. uh, And it's going to launch. Next slide, please. Uh, March, the start course is going to launch. We're going to talk about that uh, next week. Next slide. Freedom course. The new freedom course that we've been working on, that launches also in March as well. And then we're actually in the second round of something called the lead course, which is a 20-week leadership intensive. We've already walked 20 students through the first one. Now we've got the next one going. Now look, I know I've gone a little bit of overtime, but I really want to share this with you. We're going to wrap the service up in a moment. We've also got apparel that's being launched, which we're really excited about. Uh, here's some uh, designs that we got coming out. Um, the white shirt. Uh, I particularly like the black, um, just because it's slimming, you know. Uh, and so we've got about 400 shirts coming, I think, actually, as in my family. That's how many I've ordered. I haven't done that. That's not a f- wise financial decision. <laughs> but we're very excited about it. And so you can go ahead and look at that. There's limited edition T-shirts as well if you're interested. Maybe you want to buy one for your child or for a friend. Um, so you can make sure you do that. Uh, Aaron? We have someone out in the foyer that will be taking down notes uh, and, and getting people to sign up to that. So if you're interested, I'm really excited that Kids Apparel is going to be coming out as well. So you can buy some stuff for your kids, which is exciting. And so anyway, just over the next few weeks, you're going to have an opportunity to order um, some clothing and some gear and actually get revived, not just in your spirit, but on your body. All right. So that's going to be great for you. Is that cool? Yeah. Anyway, why don't you stand to your feet? Come on, why don't we give my beautiful wife a round of applause. Thank you, babe. Appreciate you. I hope your heart is stirred. Are you doing okay? Come on, why don't we just lift our hands to heaven? Well, I really hope that blessed you. I hope it stirred your faith. I hope it opened up your heart to believe God for greater, greater things. Uh, Come and join us for part two of this series as we talk about some of the projects that we are rolling out over 2021.